Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and to this series. I'm Jonathan, as you probably know by now, and I have in front of me a not very unusual weapon at all. Um, I think we could all say what this weapon was, except there's a twist. <laughs> as always, you knew it was coming. So, is this an AK-47? What is an AK-47? And that's really the sort of overarching subject of this video. And I'm going to be looking at several other examples behind me. Now, the one you just saw me shooting, uh, this is Hungarian. So right away we have a complication with, is this an AK-47 or not? And spoiler alert, this is in fact an AK-55, the year 1955. Although, as introduced in Hungary in 1955, it was just called the AK. And that's exactly the same situation in Russia as we're about to see. Now, I should say, this is part of a big collaboration with a load of other amazing channels, uh, which we will show you on screen. And we are all talking about common misconceptions in history and why they matter today. And we thought, what better subject to go with than the thorny issue of AK-47, because that term is bandied around all over the place, almost always incorrectly, as it turns out but it's a little bit of a complex subject, so bear with us. Right, so Hungarian AK or AK-55, how is that different from the original Russian AK or AK-47? Well, not very is the answer. Uh, so in th th there are three types that we'll go through in a moment, Russian types of Kalashnikov. Now that's not a system that was in use historically or, or in the Soviet Union. It's a sort of specialist collector's way of categorizing the evolution of the Russian Kalashnikov rifle. Well, the Hungarian AK-55 is a Type 3 AK. Um, so it is in fact identical in almost all respects to the Russian Type 3 AK. So much so that I haven't bothered to get out a Russian Type 3 AK uh, on the rack behind me there. The only differences are, if you can see, the selector markings where my finger is. We have a one, an Arabic numeral one, and the infinity symbol. No, this does not have unlimited ammunition, like a video game. Uh, it's just a way to say whatever ammunition you've attached to the gun, that's all getting fired on that setting. So, of course, on the Russian AKs, we would have Cyrillic characters for uh, automatic and semi-automatic. The only other difference other than, uh, well, things like inspection markings is on the rear sight here, the battle sight setting, so that the, the minimum setting on the ladder that's there for a fixed battle distance, on the Hungarian gun, it is at the letter A, rather than the Cyrillic character that's on the, the Russian AKs. And of course, you've got a, a serial number range that's going to be different as well. So we can say that it's different in terms of markings, but that's it. Um, it's one of the very first spin-off um, or licensed copies of the AK in 1955, not that many years after the, the Soviet Union has adopted it. And the initial guns that arrive in the country are straight from the production line in the Soviet Union. And they're making them pretty closely, well, exactly. You know, you, you could probably look at minute differences in, in machining and so on and say, ah, yes, that forensically speaking has come from a hung Hungarian machine. But I actually doubt that. So that's the AK-47 that we just fired. Uh, incidentally, firing bursts from the shoulder, that was the doctrine of the day. That's what this thing is designed to do for the most part, um, which is why I was doing a bit of that. Right, so... I chose this because a lot of people would see it and go, that's an AK-47. But as I say, as it turns out, this one is pretty, pretty definitively not an AK-47. It is an AK though, and it is a Kalashnikov. Right, next gun. Did you notice the change? <laughs> I'm sure some of you did. So we are now onto the Russian Kalashnikov story and whether we can call any of those AK-47. An awful lot of people would do, including specialists. And I'm not about to tell you that you're definitively wrong, but well, let me explain. So this is the Type 1, this is the first pattern of production Kalashnikov rifle. You can spot it 
from the curved machined front trunnion here because the rest of this receiver is sheet steel. The initial production of the AK was actually stamped metal, a bit like the later AKM, but a different design. And this was not deemed successful, and so quite quickly, um, I think only, only 80,000 of these were made, uh, 1949, 50, 51, and then they transitioned to the Type 2, which I'll show you quickly in a moment. Uh, there, are, there are other features of this thing. Um, a giveaway is the rather Gucci clamshell two-piece uh, two pistol grip here in plastic uh, before they transitioned to the wood that you saw on the Hungarian gun that I just showed you. Now, why, why would I argue this isn't an AK-47 either? Well, the date, primarily. So this one was made in 1951. Someone has put some, some white... Uh, powder into the markings here, as you can see them nice and clearly, dated 1951. So as the Kalashnikov was adopted in summer 1949, it was adopted as the AK, the Aptomat Kalashnikova, not as the AK-47. That is why people will tell you there is no such thing as an AK-47. Uh, whereas most of the world would say the opposite. They'd say anything that's a Kalashnikov rifle especially if it's chambered in 7.62 by 39, the original cartridge with this distinctive curve magazine, they'd say that's an AK-47. And it kind of depends on the level of detail that you're looking at. So next up, Type 2. We've gone for the machined receiver, and the big recognition feature is the great big machined groove on both sides of this solid steel receiver, and it's noticeably heavier than that Type 1, where they're trying to make it light and use less metal in production. In the long run, it's cheaper. It hasn't quite worked out, and so we've got this heavy machined receiver. Um, very robust, but a little bit heavy and uses quite a lot of steel. This one is a really special one. We won't dwell on. There's a video on this already, if, you, if you'd like to look it up. This is, was collected from the battlefield of Vietnam by Colonel Gregory Dillon, or Captain Greg Dillon, as he was then at the 17 Air Cavalry. So we treasure this one in particular. Now that alone doesn't make it a Type 2. There's this metal shoe on the back of the receiver. So you have a receiver shape that is the same both for the AK, the normal fixed stock gun, and the AKS, S meaning the underfolding stock, the one behind me. And you just stick on this shoe here as part of the buttstock to make it a fixed stock gun, if you see what I mean. So that's another relatively short-lived um, variant. They're rattling through these, these variants before they settle on the Type 3 that I've already shown you. Right, if you haven't already glazed over with so many nearly identical firearms, I'm sure some of you have spotted that what this one is. This is the AKM. So this is where it gets less confusing. 1959, the whole firearm is redesigned. Uh, literally top to bottom in every detail to create a lighter, uh, better um, design, essentially. And that's the AKM. M for modernized. So we don't have to worry about whether that's an AK-47 or not. And I think we can definitively say that if you call this an AK-47, that's wrong. And why it matters in a contemporary sense is that that's going to mislead people. So people like, uh, like uh, journalists, People studying small arms proliferation, as I've done myself, um, aid agency, whoever might need to know, or uh, forensics departments, law enforcement, that kind of thing. Anyone that needs to know the difference is going to be misled if this is called an AK-47. Now, that only matters at that fairly granular level of detail, but still, um, anyone who's a specialist, I'd say you're wrong if you call this an AK-47. So the main difference in, in that receiver, again, is we've, we've gone back to the idea of sheet metal, just a U-shaped bent bit of metal to form the body of the gun. And that's evident from these dimples. There's one either side. So if you go from the big trough in the machine steel to dimples in the sheet steel. And that's a, that's a giveaway. Other features like shape of the gas block, the muzzle device on the end here, 
ribbed top cover, back to a plastic pistol grip. So your Type 2 and Type 3 AKs have the wooden grip. This is back to a plastic one. It's all super nerdy detail, um, but that's how we differentiate your Type 1, 2 and 3 AK from your AKM. So you could stop the video now if you want and say, I'm happy with all three types of, of AK being AK-47 and everything else has, has its own name. Just to reinforce that point, this is the AK-74. So really quite similar to an AKM, but different in, in a lot of details. The big giveaways here are your straighter magazine because we've moved cartridge types to the um, more parallel sided 5.45 by 39 millimeter cartridge. And that means the magazine is curved less uh, because when you stack all the cartridges in a row, they don't describe a curve. The taper of the original cartridge is what makes that magazine kick out in a curve like that. If you lined the cartridges up on the desk, they would be in a curve. It's not an aesthetic thing. It's not, a, it's not an ergonomic thing. It's down to the shape of the cartridges. And because this smaller, longer plaster bullet, the, the cartridge that, that takes that, because that's more parallel sided, they come more straight down. So less curved magazine, you can spot that with the naked eye quite easily. And <laughs> the naked eye, like it's microscopic. And then on the end, we have this distinctive and highly effective muzzle brake, which uses exhaust gases or muzzle gases to uh, pull the gun forward against recoil. So the recoil of the cartridge is pushing the gun into your shoulder. This brake is pulling the gun forward to counteract that. You'll see them on the end of tank guns uh, in, a certain, in the Second World War period, for example. Um, so that is a, a really handy recognition feature, unless someone's removed it, although you'll still see a big threaded boss underneath. And again, we can all say, that's not an AK-47. Different cartridge, different design. So the last gun I'm going to show you, we are back to Type 1. Now, as I've said, when the, the rifle was formally adopted, it was adopted as the AK, not as the AK-47. However, for a period of months, uh, from late 1948 until summer 1949, this thing was called officially the AK-47. This wasn't, this is the AKS-47, <laughs> so the folding buttstock. The two go together. This is for paratroopers and, and specialist troops. It, it, as I'm sure you already know, it folds under the gun to make it more compact for stowing and carrying around, but you'd always want to unfold the stock for actual shooting. So AKS-47 and AK-47, it's not what, as a lot of people suggest, the name of the prototype, from what I understand from, from contacts. Um, the prototypes weren't actually called AK-46, AK-47, AK-48, AK-49. Those are perhaps a bit misleading. It was, it was initially conceived just as the AK. Then for a period of, of months in late 48, early 49, it suddenly acquires the, the, the designation AK-47. And that's where this whole story starts. And the name sort of sticks. Uh, so uh, thank you to, um, among others, uh, Vladimir Onokoy for his um, sharing um, online and, and with me separately a number of documents. Uh, also, Jip McTavish, thank you as well. There are an awful lot of doc documents from that period and actually beyond the adoption in summer 1949 where the name AK-47 crops up. There's even a manual where plain as day on the front cover is the name AK-47, even though in the entire rest of the manual, it's not called that. It's just called the Automat or the Automat Kalashnikova. So it's a, it's a sort of a nuanced subject, but all of this boils down to, we at the Royal Armouries have one AKS-47. We have to remember the S because of the folding stock, but nonetheless, because this one, as Jip very kindly informed me some time ago, this serial number prefix here, which is TL, it's Cyrillic characters, but it's actually TL. That is May 1949 production. So this dates from the brief period where there was officially 
an AK-47 and an AKS-47. So we are really pleased to have this. Type 1 AKs are rare anyway. Uh, this one's had a hard life. It's lost most of its finish. Um, but yeah, re really, really nice to have that. And it does speak to this mass confusion over what AK-47 means. Right. If I've lost you there, or even if I haven't lost you there, a, a summary might be helpful. Type 1 to Type 3 AKs. You can call those AK-47 if you like. I wouldn't. I would only call rifles made in that period late, so um, autumn 48 to summer 49, technically speaking, those are AK-47s, nothing else. So whilst it's acceptable and actually very correct to describe anything that looks a bit like an M16 as an AR-15, because that's the type name, it's the top level family name for that series of firearms, it's technically not acceptable to call everything generically in AK-47, um, in, in my view and in the view of a few others. Um, your mileage may vary, but it's easier for all concerned if you just call it an AK, because that covers absolutely everything. So the equivalent to AR-15 would actually be AK, or Kalashnikov rifle. So there you have it, guys. This is our contribution to the History Matters collaboration. Don't forget to check out the various other videos that will be coming out. There'll be a playlist for that, that you'll be able to access uh, and see what the various um, very good <laughs> other channels are putting out. We thought we'd go with something that's well, it's pretty pretty historic by this point. 1947 is, is a heck of a long time ago now, and uh, still with contemporary relevance, because who doesn't know or who hasn't heard of AK-47s? 